2022 year end is the 19th year of creating these end of the year videos. Another busy year but COVID-19 has calmed down and all gatherings have resumed without restrictions. As always, the year in review starts with December of the previous year. As is normal, this year's video review starts with the Snow Ranch Pinata rocket launch. It was a hazy day and most rockets did not get to fly due to the low clouds. The Pinata lit its red motor on the ground as planned and only air started one of its two green motors in the air. But all the candy came out and the rocket was safely recovered. As 2021 started, it also ended with a New Year's Eve party at the Arantes household. January 2022 starts with an update of a promise from 2021. Tony did start his bathroom project. Spoiler alert, he did not finish it. His plan is to experiment with different kinds of shower hardware in the hall bathroom. Once that gets sorted out, gut the master bathroom and finish it. Then gut and finish the hall bathroom. Sounds like a solid plan. Then the details start getting in the way. Seems as if contractors want to do standard stuff and don't seem to be too interested in a custom job. First custom issue is that Tony wanted a specific ceiling fan with a heater in it. Also, he wanted the fan's night light wired special and the regular light combined with a mirror light. Second, he wants some special shower fixtures that he is not even sure about. Third, he wants to remove a void space next to the master bathroom shower and make a bigger shower. This involves moving the water plumbing and rerouting a sewer vent. As for experimenting with shower hardware, he temporarily installed a shower wall. He cut open the wall and removed the old shower hardware. Then he installed new hardware spaced correctly for a shower wall. The shower wall has five modes. From top to bottom, it has waterfall, rainfall, hand wand, body spray and tub spigot. In case you are taking notes, waterfall is really pointless. Rainfall is wonderful and is always used. Hand wand is useful for getting into tight places. Tony uses it daily to clean his ears. Body spray is a nice idea but not useful. Perhaps it will be when he is more handicapped. Then the tub spigot, great to fill a bucket. By the way, the tub will be removed in the final design in favor of a walk-in shower. One of the most desired features of the shower wall was the thermostatically controlled water valve. It is supposed to keep the water temperature stable despite changes in water pressure due to things like a toilet flushing or a washer starting as he is doing while recording this. The original valve in the shower wall allowed a 6 degree Celsius temperature change. That is about 11 degrees Fahrenheit. That is not comfortable. Tony found a replacement thermostatic valve online that kept the temperature to a 2 degree Celsius change, less than 4 degree Fahrenheit. Very nice. Tony has just installed his second shower system that is a digitally temperature controlled system made by Kohler. Still gathering data about how it performs. Late January, Bob, Tony and Cheryl did a two-day trip to Napa including two stops at Cheryl's favorite winery. February 2022 also started with a snow ranch launch of the Pinata rocket. How about a 1 8 speed slow motion of the launch? Got to love that big rocket sound that the slow motion delivers especially at staging to the air start motors. Wait for it, 500 feet. Uh-oh. There it goes. All right, you can go kids. Again, candy safely delivered to the kids. For Christmas Kevin wanted a new desk. It took a while to design, 
acquire materials and build. Once the plan and parts came together, Tony and him got to building. With the windows done, Tony, Cheryl, Peggy and Bob went off to Hawaii for Tony and Cheryl's 35th anniversary and Tony's 59th birthday. Tony snorkeled about twice a day. They also went on a few excursions including whale watching, dolphins and peaceful walks. Tony and Cheryl got new phones with incredible features. Tony made it a mission to explore the features. He took this 80-minute time-lapse video compressed down to 30 seconds of the setting sun at their Koolina Resort. He also played with the night and astrophotography modes. One photo happened to catch a falling star, or a satellite, here is the short video of the falling star. For the last morning, Tony woke early to take a 90-minute time-lapse of the morning sunrise. You can see the morning star, also known as Venus rising with the sun. March 2022 and speaking of household projects. As a reminder, Tony installed one window on his own. He took three hours to get it installed and only dropped it on himself once. The other seven windows and sliding glass door were installed by a contractor. Here is the update. I'll only cover his most laughable window in detail. Here is what the window originally looked like. Not terrible, but it will be better. Here is the inside view. It is important to note that the contractor was willing to work with Tony and his own peculiar style of doing things. Tony wanted the windows to be as large as possible. He decided that he would remove all the interior and exterior trim. Then the surprises started. As he started removing trim, he found what he called stuffer boards inside the trim. He guesses that the last time the windows were replaced, sometime before 1990, when he and Cheryl bought the house, that the contractors bought standard off-the-shelf windows and filled the window frame with stuffer boards until the new windows fit. Not cool in Tony's opinion. As he dug deeper into the mess, he discovered that two of the original windows had nothing securing the bottom of the windows to the house. The males were either driven into a void or had stucco stuffed in around them. Yes, that is the outside that you can see under the frame of the window. Those rulers go completely into the living room. Fortunately the only bad window was the hall bathroom window and the only rotted board was the stuffer board that was installed. The contractors made short work of getting the old windows out, even with Tony's unwavering supervision. Yes the beer did help with supervising duties. Not long after getting the old window out, the frame prepared, the new window was installed. Then Tony painted all the exterior trim and installed and painted all the interior trim. Another Snow Ranch Pinata rocket flight and the last launch of the season. Also the last flight of this version of the Pinata rocket. It is going to need a little maintenance before it flies again next season. Cousin Kathy and Cheryl decided to attend a barrel opening party at one of their favorite wineries. Of course this also required a stop at the castle. Buying supplies and going to the barrel party. April 2022 came and one of Tony's high school classmates wanted to take a trip to Yellowstone. The trip started with a visit with Aunt Lois. They had to leave Aunt Lois reasonably early due to the weather changing. It was snowing in the Sierra Nevada hills. Growing up in Iowa, Tony owned three different sets of snow chains, but he had never actually used or installed snow chains until this day. Something kind of ironic about installing snow chains in the rain. However, minutes later the road looked like this. 20 miles and one hour later and it was night time and raining again. He was allowed to remove the chains. Seconds after getting on the road again, there was a noise coming from the left rear tire and the tire pressure monitoring system started alarming. Tony had to remove this wire from the tire. Of course the tire no longer held air. In the dark and rain he got to change the tire. Most cars today do not come with a spare tire. Fortunately, that was one of the first things that Tony bought for his new car. That hole was going to require a repair. Fortune smiled on Tony for not only did he pack his car with a tire plug and kit, but most new cars do come with a tire pump and Tony had a 12 volt lithium ion jumper battery pack that also has a 12 volt cigarette lighter port in it. 
He was able to plug the hole and pump up a tire in the hotel room. He let it sit overnight to be sure that it held air. Next morning as he and Cheryl escorted the tire through the lobby of the hotel, he was heard to exclaim to no one in particular. Don't laugh at me. I'm from California and my tires do not like the cold weather here. Cheryl made sure to align the Honda emblem right side up in the center of the tire. Speaking of Yellowstone, they did make it all the way. Of course there were plenty of bison to watch. They saw moose on the way to Yellowstone. A few bears. How about a super slow motion video of geyser water joining the Yellowstone River? Being the fulfillment of a dream of Tony and Cheryl's, going to Yellowstone in the winter, there were incredible sights to be seen. This is Upper Yellowstone Falls. Bison trotting alongside the road. Upper Gibbon Falls. Barrel Springs. Cheryl and Tony walked out to the edge of Mammoth Hot Springs. Pallet Spring in the Mammoth area. Most of them at Upper Yellowstone Falls. Hot tub time after a long day of sightseeing. What Yellowstone trip would be complete without a video of Old Faithful erupting? Perhaps this one is best because this time lapse compresses a 10 minute eruption into a 1 minute video. How about a time lapse video to close out the Yellowstone trip? For about two days of the trip they were snowed in and had to just drink, eat and hot tub in the terrible weather. At least it was terrible for the Californian parts of the party. Perhaps the native Iowans thought it was just another winter day. Cheryl flew back to work while Tony went to visit an old Navy friend, Pam. The last time he saw her was 1985, 37 years earlier. She lives alone in rural Oregon. Has her own horse. They played pickleball. A first for Tony. When they were in the Navy, they played racquetball at least weekly. There is an elk preserve near Pam's home. They then made a day trip to Multnomah Falls. When they picked up their electric bicycles, they met a young Indian girl who was traveling alone. The three ended up spending the whole day together. Tony loves experimenting with the special features of his phone. This photo shows off the motion blur setting. Notice the water in the waterfall. This is from the bottom of the Multnomah Falls. Must need a view from the top of Multnomah Falls. Then it was time to return home. Tony did not remember ever seeing the 14,000 feet of Mount Shasta from Interstate 5 before. He had to take a few photos. May 2022 and Cheryl decided to take her Winchester 3030 out for its first shooting. She used all 20 rounds that had been kept since the 1960s. It was a gift from her father, J.C. Cooper. Peggy turned 85 in May and the family took a lunch cruise on the San Francisco Bay. May also brings Bottle Rock, the three-day concert in Napa Valley. They cannot help but to start the concert with a trip to their favorite winery, Castillo de Amorosa. Then the three days of music. That always segues into Memorial Day family gathering at the Chamberlain House. June 2022 and more shooting. Cousin Ian made the trip to the range shooting the Smith & Wesson 500. Seems that the turkeys trusted his ability to aim. Tony and Cheryl went to their second concert of the year, Brit Floyd, a Pink Floyd tribute band. In Tony's words, a truly excellent tribute band. Tony and Bob took off visiting six different wineries over two days. July 2022 and Tony's sister Marie Jane made a trip to California to evaluate moving in with Tony and Marie Jane's father, Clifford Ayers. Tony forced her to make a trip to he and Kevon's favorite brewery, Shadow Puppet. Tony and Marie Jane's favorite band is Led Zeppelin. He made her go to Led Zeppelin too, a Led Zeppelin tribute band, two nights in a row. Cheryl tried her hand at trapping a possum. To celebrate they went to a barrel opening party in Napa and made a couple other stops. 
Tony and Kevon took a beer tasting 101 class to learn how to become beer judges. They decided to remain amateur drinkers. Less spitting and more enjoying. August 2022 and Cheryl had a manager's retreat to attend. She agreed to take Tony if he did not try to drink all the beer. After the July test run to move Marie Jing in with their father, Tony returned to Iowa to help his sister move. They packed all of Marie Jane's possessions into a van and hit the road after visiting with a few friends. Tony's classmate Julie and husband Bruce. Drinking with Tony's old teacher, Ken. A little time with Tony's Aunt Sharon. Then on the road while playing some billiards. Having an evening there before bedtime. Sightseeing on the Colorado River in Glenwood Canyon. The Black Dragon Canyon Overlook. A serious microburst with significant hail and splitting a fish dinner before making it to California. September 2022 and Tony and Cheryl did their usual pre-Labor Day trip to Napa before celebrating with the Chamberlains. Cheryl needed to work when Tony took off to a bush, breaking Benjamin's and Allison Chain's concert. Two days later both Bob and Cheryl joined him at a Pink Floyd tribute band concert. Two weeks after that, a Roger Waters concert. And two days later, Bone Bash 18. Two more days and a Billy Joel tribute concert. One more week and a Kid Rock concert. Do you know a good way to get rust off an old gun for restoration? The answer is to boil the gun. Kevin had experimented with rain gutters to make a trough to boil the gun, but his daddy said. Wouldn't it be easier to boil a gun vertically? Kevin bought a turkey fryer and he and Tony worked on building a vertical tank out of HVAC You ever heard piping. about nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs? Well, here's a young man boiling a gun that keeps having geysers coming over the top. And of course, gas is just pouring out at the moment and we're trying to strike a flame near it and see what detonates or not. And there it turned off. And I think you got your striker too wet because I can see smoke coming up from the tip of the striker. <laughs> there we go. We have fire. So, Kevin, what's on the menu today with cooking with Kevin Cooper? Swiss 1869. Oh, I'm going to have to turn off my music or they'll block the sound in my uh, my video. <laughs> water in my uh, in your burner yeah so a swiss 1869 1869 gun boiling inside a trough of vertical trough of water but it's having a little trouble controlling the burnt or boiling rate and when the guys are over tops it puts out the fire october is aftershock month since Tony's sister was in the area, she also joined the festivities. For those that may have forgotten, Aftershock is a four-day concert of angry music for happy people. Chris brought along their partners and it took until day three for the whole party to get together at one place and time. It is required to take a full party photo in front of the Aftershock sign. Later in October, Kathy invited Cheryl to a crush party. They had to visit the castle, of course. Take way too many photos. Go squash some grapes at the party. They sorted matter other than grapes out from the grapes. Walked around the vineyard. And drank copious amounts of wine. Bob asked Tony escort him to a Vietnam veteran reunion in Nevada. Then the Who concert back in California. For Halloween, they set up a beer for adults and candy for kids table in the driveway. November 2022 and Tony's stepfather, John Earl White at 81 years old and a longtime resident of Nevada, Iowa, passed away on November 13, 2022 at Rolling Green Village in Nevada, Iowa due to natural causes. He was born March 26, 1941 in Osceola, Texas. His parents were John Dumar White and Lois Maid Brown. John has a full brother Tommy Lee White. Lois remarried in 1964 to John Theodore Hensaker bringing four stepbrothers. 
John graduated from Nevada High School in 1960. He joined the Army in 1966 where he served two years. He was working at the Ames, Iowa USDA Animal Disease Lab when he met Tony's mother, Kathleen Sue, Allen, Kelderman, in 1978, whom he married twice. Once in 1982, and once in 1990. Due to being a 16-year-old high school student heavily involved with yearbook functions, working a part-time job, and joining the U.S. Navy at 17, Tony did not know John very well but John provided Tony's mother a good life until her passing in 2006. New Year's Eve 2018 John fell down his steps at his home in Nevada, Iowa and broke his hip. It was three days until he was found and taken to the hospital. After rehabilitation, he moved to an assisted living place in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma to be closer to his brother Tom. Due to declining health and increasing needs, he relocated to Northwest Assisted Living in Ames, Iowa in 2020 and then to Rolling Green Village Nursing Home in Nevada, Iowa in 2021. John did not desire any services and was cremated on November 14, 2022. In accordance with his wishes, his ashes were scattered with his late wife's ashes in Marshalltown, Iowa. To finish November, two more concerts. The Cult and Carrie Underwood for Cheryl's 11th and Tony's 12th concert for the year. Now for the Time Machine feature, 20 years ago. Kevin and Chris turned 9 what do you and want? 3 years old. Body training was going well with Chris. You want to show me the big peepees and the little peepees? Uh-huh. Where are they? In the toilet. All right, let's go see. Okay. What you got? What's in that? A little peepee. Little peepees and little peepees? No, big peepees and little peepees. Little peepees and big peepees? Uh-huh. I guess you got little peepees and big peepees in there. Uh-huh. Are you proud of yourself? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm proud of you too. You did good thing. You did go peepees in the toilet? Uh-huh. Can we flush the toilet now? Uh-huh. I can in it too. Yeah, something like that. Two thousand two was the year that started the eighteen year long monster truck habit. Easter obviously was a good time for the kids. Two thousand two was also the year that Tony met two of his half brothers. Older brother Clifford and younger brother Stephen. Tony and Cheryl took a fifteenth anniversary cruise to the Caribbean. Hope that was just bad timing for the photo. They don't look real amused here. Cheryl was better prepared for this photo. They cruise to several islands whose names have been forgotten. Anything goofy about taking a ship to go on a boat ride? What about taking a submarine trip? Kevin and Chris enjoyed driving RC cars. Kids enjoyed a day trip to Bonfunny Gardens. Kevin started riding a motorcycle with his dad. Kevin would have started third grade, while Chris was not in school yet. Chris definitely liked cake. Granny Margaret Faye Allison Ewing passed away October 15, 2002. Kevin was playing soccer. Kevin had a reptile birthday party when he turned 9. And the kids posed with Santa for a nice photo. Kevin was still trying to figure out how to sit properly in a seat. Kevin found it difficult to wait for Christmas. The whole family posed for a Christmas card photo. Pushing the time machine controls a bit more we journey back to 1972 where we find Tony living in Hawaii on the island of Oahu. One of the few things that Tony was able to bring to the island was his birthday bicycle. Dig the crazy banana seat, sissy bar and central gear shift. Tony turned 9. He performed in the late days celebration performing the hukula with his class. Tony won a fire poster contest. He still remembers that he came up with the idea to draw a before and after picture of a house fire. He thought it was pretty clever and apparently so did the judges. 
Aunt Carol and Grandma Snyder came to visit during Christmas time. On Cheryl's side of the family, she was still living in California. She had some large family gatherings. Cheryl was in the third grade. Halloween was a blast for her and her brothers. She and her brothers all posed with Santa even if brother John was not amused. That is all for this installment of the Cooper 2022 Year in Review.